I'm going to start off by uh, just uh, wishing you all a welcome back. Uh, I'm so, so, so happy to see beautiful faces. You know, you make my day. These après cours sciences and math always makes my day, you know, because I know how long, how much it takes out of your time to come and, and share this. Um, so we're up for another year. I uh, just wanted to uh, give you a, a message from uh, from Hélène Rodriguez. She would not be with us this year because she had a baby and a beautiful, beautiful boy. So yeah, we're sh like I, I'm super happy for her. After a long wait, this beautiful bundle of joy arrived. So uh, she's she'll be taking she'll be taking the year to take care of her baby, rightfully so. But she's super excited to come back next year. So she goes to me. I will be back. I say, you're always welcome. So she just wanted to extend the message this year. And she specifically sent me a message. She said, you take care of my teachers. I said, okay, I will do my best. So that's the message from, uh, from Ellen. And, um, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, Ellen is super special. She, she, her heart is out in the uh, adult ed anyways. So um, that being said, I would like to uh, and welcome back all our partners. So the, our partners, of course, you know, BIM, RECI, and SEC, these are all services that are available to you, to your centers, to you teachers, if you have anything, um, that they all come in at whenever time you need to help us out. So if we ever talk about, let's say, inclusivity, I might invite SEC to come in, plus RECI, you know, if we ever need any, if you have any specific need that you need, we could call up on a big, huge partners. And of course, EPC, it's always like, they're the, they're the, the foundation. There are a consultant, local consultant that get the message across everybody. So that being said, I would like to start with them, uh, our beautiful Barbara. I'm so happy to see you, Barbara. Happy to see you too. Happy to see everybody and hope you're having a very good September. Welcome back and we're ready for uh, another year. <laughs> oh, yay. Any, any news on the evaluation side? <laughs> Uh, the only thing is, is for the TSG um, 4060, there's a version D that's going to be coming out in the next week or so. So the version D, both the theory and the practical, that's the new exam that's coming out. So that's sort of the last one. Uh, up to, we have no other exams that we're working on that are new. However, please send in your feedback because we are constantly doing corrections. When you find an error in an exam or, or something to improve the exam, we're constantly updating them. So that's the news so far, and I don't know anything else. <laughs> well, still, a new exam for 4060, that's awesome. Yes. So at least we have a repertoire that's growing. That's awesome. Um, that being said, Resi our lovely Giovanna. So Giovanna's in transition. Um, Giovanna, Joanne. Um, so I don't have a lot to report, but I will just put in the chat. Um, my colleagues, Mark is really good with uh, reporting network news. So I encourage you to join the Facebook group and uh, subscribe to the newsletter so you could um, follow what's going on in the network. And we also have, um, some like clé en main um, workshops. So particularly UDL is going to be like pushed this year. So I invite you to look look out for that. So um, so this is great. And we have also the SEC uh, also a group. Uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to be here today, but we'll try to see whenever is needed, they'll be coming and helping us out. So the SEC is the Service Educatif Complementaire. So anything that has to deal with student support, uh, students in difficulties, uh, they might have many tricks up their sleeves to come in and maybe help us out in our, in our discipline uh, at hand. So, so those, uh, those ladies will be coming in when, when needed, okay? Because they're super, super busy, but we have access to them too. Um, and of course, uh, I know uh, EPC is always in the background. They're shadowing everything we do. So if there's anything you need or anything you want, you could always go and consult your local consultant to bring it up. So if it is, uh, if it is something that, that, uh, that's, that matters to you, you have access to someone who could hear you right away in your center. And if you don't, you're more than welcome to contact me or anybody else uh, uh, on our team to help you out. So. Um, that being said, 
uh, this year our après cool is going to be taking a new format. What does that mean? Last year was um, was a drop in kind of very relaxed setup. This year I thought we're going to do something a little bit different, just to to kind of um, maybe maximize maximize uh, our time because I know those times are, are valuable. So um, we're going to try to do a, a, this, a, a round table approach, which means I'm going to get panels. We're going to put together every time a panel of experts in a subject or in a, in a need, in a specific um, topic. And we're going to have a discussion, uh, meaning I'll be asking them questions. They'll be answering based on their experience, on their knowledge. And this, this, this uh, will be all filmed and will be shared for you to review or to share with other colleagues if need to. And we will open a little, uh, a little time for, for questions. If you have a burning question, please write it in the chat and my, my colleague Giovanna will interrupt and we'll, uh, we'll ask it. So uh, if not, at the end, um, if, uh, at the end we'll be uh, asking, uh, you, could, you could ask the, the, the panels directly your question. Is that good? Um, that being said, that being said, uh, let's get our panel uh, together and uh, start our discussion. I would like, if you don't mind, my beautiful panel, can you uh, present yourselves? Oh, okay, me, um, I'm Michelle Wismer. I'm at the Western Quebec School Board and I'm teaching bio. I guess we are talking about bio, right? Yes. Sure. Yes, and I do an individualized setting. Thank you. Tanya. I, <clears throat> sorry, I, I lost my voice earlier today, so it's very well timed. Um, my name is Tanya Machula, and I work at, um, at Leslie Pearson School Board at Las Cartier, and I teach it in a classroom setting. Thank you, Tanya. Jessica. Hello, everybody. So my name is Jessica Lee. I work for two different school boards. I I have not really started teaching biology, but when I do, I will be teaching them either in individualized setting or in distant education. Wonderful. And just to let you know, Laura, who's our our, our fifth panelist, she couldn't make it today because she's in her uh, she's doing her stage while well, she's school stuff. She is a student too. So uh, Jessica might kind of like report on what she, Laura said, or maybe Michelle might talk about long distance ed when it comes to biology. And um, Guylaine. Hi, Guylaine Richer from the Cree School Board, uh, teaching math and hopefully uh, science while well, I've done it science, individualized. Um, Thing, but for science, I think, I don't know which setup we'll, uh, we'll pick. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> In research of the best practice, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So uh, my question, I'll, I'll just ask you the question and please you can take turn in answering you. You know, there's no order here. We're just decontracted conversation. So um, how is teaching bio this past year? I know most of you taught bio. So for anyone who taught it, how is it? I guess Tanya or Michelle. <laughs> I'll go. Um, I, I really liked it. It worked really well. It's a lot of work, sorry. Um, but I think the students had a really good time too. And uh, I, I had a vast majority of them pass. What about you, Michelle? Um, so my setup is a bit different from Tanya's. I'm individualized and I also have math going on at the same time as bio in the same classroom. So I enjoyed it. I love bio because that's my background. So I, I was really happy to get to teach that again. And especially because the, the two modules are really, really interesting genetics and development. The, the students, yeah, they, they loved learning it too. And I mean, when I could pull aside a few small groups and stuff, I could, but I, I it worked like I, it was a steep learning curve for me because it was the first time, but it was good. It was good. So just, just for fun, where did you get the content? Where did you get the material? Where did you get the program? 
So um, I got uh, like the program of study and everything, the curriculum and everything was from the website, from the ministry website. That's where I initially, and then I used that to create what we, you know, our I can statements for the students. Content, um, well, the basic thing we used was the SOFA textbook because that's pretty much what we have in terms of textbooks and the students like to have a textbook. And of course, the uh, the scored activities as pre-tests. We in the in the beginning we kind of used those as like a practice test thing. And but then as the courses went on and the year went on, I got better at figuring out finding different websites with relevant information that could help them to say things in a different way. Because to be honest, the SOFAD is satisfactory but it's not the best so definitely needed some you know extra stuff to go like notes to go along with it so I found what I could but I mean I just pulled from any any and everywhere I could like any I was just begging <laughs> Michelin helped us like I stole from Tanya stole from Jessica stole from every like just you know whatever whatever well, we have to have a starting point, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And and uh, and uh, how did you organize your teaching? I'm sorry, I'm just like uh, so many questions in my head. So we have to start somewhere. So we're asking you like now. Let's say if you have to restart it again, how would you re? How would you organize your teaching? Like, well, I'm teaching it for the second time right now, um, which is nice because that way I can add on to what I had before and complete all my answer keys that I didn't have time to do the first time. Um, and it's in four units. Each each book is in four units. And I based mine on SOFAD, but then I got a lot of information from Troy. He shared his slides with me, which was incredibly helpful. Um, and then I based off that, and I have a lot of slides um, with uh, videos and pictures and different points of view to tell the same thing, because the, the content is really hard to understand. Um, especially for these students, because they're not necessarily very high science students. So. Yeah. Did you face the same thing, Michelle? Um, yes, actually, uh, I found that pretty much 99% of my students I was getting in bio were taking it because they had to take a science and were, were told that maybe this would be, if they hate math, this would be the easiest science for them to take. Now, I had to make sure to tell them, okay, maybe it's the easiest in terms of you don't know, need to know math, but you still need to know how to read and understand and express yourself. And there's concepts and memorization. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of them ended up dropping out <laughs> like sort of early on because they're like, this is way harder than I thought. I was like, well, yes, it's a level five course. And yeah, so like 99% of my students, like they had not had any sort of formal science background, like at all, like all they had done was maybe elementary school, a lot of them were like, yeah, I did science in elementary school or grade six, or I'm like, well, it's not some of them like one or two had been told about it, because apparently they had science teachers who were so gung ho about genetics that they started to tell them about genetics in a chemistry class or something I don't know like they just happened to hear about things or they read but a lot of them are taking it because they needed it for the science requirement or for like vet, vet tech um, or some sort of like kinesiology or something they needed it but but yeah like it the content definitely was new is new to like pretty much all of them taking it they'd never especially genetics like no clue no clue so it, so that's where I had to kind of pull a lot of information and sit with them individually to try to explain things one on one because I do it, of course, one on one. So I'd like to add also that a lot of students saw biology and thought it was like human anatomy. Yes. And were unprepared for genetics and heredity and this reproductive is true. development. Yeah. So they, <laughs> it's true, Tanya. They were coming and they're like, so I'm going to learn about the digestive system and the uh, the circulatory system and stuff, right? And isn't that the kind of thing you learn about the human body? I'm like, well, sort of, but more on a molecular level in terms of the genetics. And 
a little more from like the real development from the from scratch and the other one. So yeah, they were they were surprised. They just they thought it would be human anatomy. <laughs> a lot of them. So so thank you. That that's really interesting. But now if we take a look, Jessica from uh, or <laughs> Gillen, you want to add something to it? Yeah, I want to add something. The the old program were all about the the, the anatomy and systems, right? That that was probably heard about biology from other people learning it. And uh, for me, it was pretty new. I've, I've been studying uh, science, but it, it's been such a long time ago and I've been stuck in math for so many years that I had a lot to do to, to because I taught this uh, genetic last year, but actually like I built all those presentation using genially and I would follow the book uh, you know, uh, one lesson at a time and then search YouTube for the best explaining video and then find games uh, throughout the presentation and genially and then refer them to the book to do the exercise or answer, you know, and if it, it worked actually pretty well, if I had to do it again, I think I would add a more interactive time after every uh, situation because it's it's you know it's a by a chapter but then in the chapter there's two situations sort of thing I think if I remember well so I would do like kind of a recap of it you know uh, just chatting uh, the two of us together and do something like that and because the writing like with the creed the writing is is so challenging and the, the vocabulary is so complex so new also so i think there's there's something to be done there uh, about it so to ease when they get to the exam actually i find the exam very difficult in terms of yeah the percentage that asks you to raisonne uh, you know analyze make suggestion uh, if you look at the part that is the lab, but then the part that is not the lab exam is also, you know, such a short little thing about, you know, uh, uh, multiple choice and stuff like that. And then again, you're out there having to read a situation, having to answer those um, steps, you know, task. So anyway, uh, I, I think there's a lot to be done to to really make them ready for that. So, Guylaine, what you're trying to say is to start off, let's say, with a, a geniali or some sort of like a, a, a sheet, a direction sheet, and then get the book involved, you know, when the, like you introduce the topic through a different way and then use the book as a support versus like what Michelle was doing, which is use the book and complement the book with more material. This is different ways. They're both interesting and, and and jessica yeah sorry Ms. Sarah, sorry uh sarah wants to know what fields are these required these courses what uh in what fields are they required oh uh, you mean uh what uh, after yeah. sorry because uh i don't know uh, we haven't taught these courses yet uh, and uh, currently i teach for example in our center we teach sec four all the courses and we teach sec five chemistry and physics so I just want to know uh, which fields do these biology sec five courses open more than compared to chemistry or physics in there. You talked about science, but I'm not sure about. And the second question would be, what are the prerequisites? Because you talked earlier about the um, digestive system or the nervous system, or whatever. These anatomy is prerequisites in uh, TSG 4059, for example, or they're totally uh, independent from these. Sorry, I'm lost with those because I don't know really those courses. You, as far as I know, you don't really have to have any um, solid science background. There's no real chemistry or physics involved, no math involved. So um, you do indirectly do some chemistry, but not like any kind of equations and stuff. Sec five English though, like you need to know how to write and interpret and analyze and like express yourself on paper in a, in a, in a good way. Like you have to be able to write at least a certain standard. You don't have to be like the best of the best, but we do expect a certain level of literacy. 
Um, as for what, like, I don't know all of the different um, avenues it can open up, but I do know like my students, well, they take it as what they think would be the most doable science requisite and all just for their diploma or whatever. And also I'll get a lot of those wanting to do vet tech. I've had a few like kinesiology people wanting to try it, any sort of health related um, program. And I think in university or college or whatever, it's, yep. it can open up avenues for you there like for example if you want to be a nurse is there yes. any relationship yes yes requires a core yes. and chemistry so yes just uh, avoid any chemistry course if you have the credits in biology no i don't think it avoids i think it enhances but it, i don't i think you still have to do the chemistry for the nursing yeah as far as i know yeah. nursing requires chemistry no, no matter what we do yes so, yes uh, what does biology offer more than for students who who, uh, who has who would have completed? Because to complete chemistry, they need to complete their science four and reach science, which is TSC 4863 and TSC 4864. Then chemistry 5061 and 62. So, what would uh, that open more if those if students have to complete science four and sec? for uh, five chemistry. If the way I see it uh, myself, it doesn't open more, but like for instance, in, in my case, students have uh, very low uh, credits so far accumulated from high school. So because you need those 10 credits from SEC 5 optional course, it can become an optional course. So if there any interest in science and science is fun for them to learn, then it's a good way to get a two credit in one course uh that is fun to learn right i mean and um yeah so it, it just helps you get those optional credits like five like yes, four yeah. you know that you need and but you're you're right if they want to open up uh, i think you know to uh university uh, college uh, in science they need to do their sec like four science right yeah, the, this uh, is questions. what they really need you yeah. know the other exactly. Is, you guys mentioned uh, kind of a challenge for the students to uh, uh, to understand because the contents are very hard to understand. So I'm talking, I'm thinking about all these new immigrants who have to look at some uh, prerequisites in there. So I'm just wondering if it would really help. So what kind of students do you really have in those individualized settings in there? Uh, just yeah, sorry. Just before we, we move on to that second question, Gail, just give me if you don't if you don't mind one second to interfere for the previous question. Let's be clear: the bio fifty seventy and fifty seventy one these are optional sec five courses. Optional sec five courses. That means we will get one of the questions later on. What are the prerequisites for these courses? Nothing. Nothing. So what Michelle was saying to have a sec five English. That's what we. If you take a look at the course and say, what is the government requires? Nothing. But you assume if the student in SEC 5 should be SEC 5 English, right? But we know yeah. that's not the case, okay? So there's no requirement to take these courses. These are SEC 5 optional credit courses. Mm -hmm. to, come back to, to come back to the second part, a lot of the courses that these bio is like a lot of the nursing students take these courses because like you said, the misconception that these are anatomy courses or this the word bio is going to a health field, right? So a lot of the students who are interested in science or they would like to f continue a career in science, this is by interest. It's an option course by interest, not because it's required for any FP or CJEP or whatever program. Okay, Gail, I don't know if you wanna add. If um, students do the unthinkable thing of continuing their studies outside Quebec, there are places where biology is required for a nursing program. So there's that's something to consider as well. I can see it being advantageous for a lot of reasons for students, mm -hmm. mostly for what everyone has mentioned. It just helps to um, strengthen their whatever their prereq, whatever their portfolio is going in to study sciences at CJEP and outside of the province too, if they choose that route. 
Thank you. Yeah. That's very, very good point. Decision is very important because some of the students, most of the students I currently uh, see are post-secondary students who graduated from high school and who are really eager to get to CEGEP. So I just want to make sure that if Bio could really offer any speed up kind of channel for these to go to CEGEP, for example, or it could be a net, I understand it could be a more uh, of a, an added value if they have to wait to go to CEGEP, but if they're really looking at the minimum channel to go to their post-secondary and to be admitted in CEGEP, I understand those are not prerequisites. As uh, SEC4 and SEC5 chemistry are prerequisite to go to the nursing in Quebec. Thanks, Gail, for the precision for other provinces. Very important. Yeah, but let's just remember another thing. Biology courses are not English courses, right? So as long as they can communicate their thoughts, we're good. We're not correcting grammar or vocabulary. This is not, of course, we would like them to, to be proficient, but this is not the requirement for these courses. We would love to lift up their literacy level, but it's not through those courses, right? So let's, let's just be clear because it's still, it, 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 a lot of our immigrant students they could manage to explain, maybe with not perfect English, but they could manage to explain their thought and their knowledge about the topic. So just for, for some immigrant students, those courses might be actually better and easier because they know they mastered the topic and they're interested in the topic. It might give them like a tool to improve their English actually, okay? So just take a look at it. It's like, it's not sometimes it's a harmful thing. It could be a, like a good thing for the student if they love the topic enough. Sometimes, you know, I had a, I had once in my class uh, years, years ago, I had an astrophysicist from Russia and she was taking a physics class. Like, I don't know what I could teach her that she doesn't know. And she used it as an English course. She goes, I love the topic, but I'm using what I love to learn English. And she was like one of my favorite students because she was helping me making pretests and assignments, right? But for her, the benefit she's learning a language. So we can look at it that way too. So just food for thought. But I just wanna just I wanna ask Jessica from the distant learning part, how would you have planned it? Because you're online, right? You could teach biology online, right? What's your thought on that? Because we'd like to cover all kind of teaching grounds, individualized in class, uh Gilen, which is a mix, and maybe Jessica just distant. Well, I unfortunately will have to use the SOFAD because it's the only complete resources. Uh, but I have already built a, a collection of videos, some of Ghislaine's uh, genially and other things, I can statements, etc., that are aligned to their, the material in SOFAD. So complementary to the sofa to fill in any gaps. And so far I haven't had the need to take out the entire chapters, unlike what other sofa book uh, make me do. <laughs> uh, so that's at least the plan. And, but I have only one School, uh, one student registered so far, and because it's, it is the education, they're doing it on their own pace. So I have not seen any work yet, and therefore haven't had the opportunity to improve on my design. <laughs> yeah. But it's a design uh, nonetheless. Awesome. Thank you. Now I'd like to move on to challenges. Okay, we're going to look at it from many ways, from many corners. Uh, planning challenges, uh, we could look at the most difficult part of teaching, what part was the hardest thing to teach, you know, okay, I'm going to break it in a few, a few, few, few steps. So let's start planning difficulties or the hardest part to, to teach in those programs. I guess, Tanya. <laughs> okay. Um, I find since the content is so uh, there's so many new terms, there's so many new topics they have to learn. I really broke it down very small. Um, so things like Punnett squares, 
I broke down. First, we looked at genotypes and phenotypes, really just lo looking at that, then moving to actual Punnett squares, then moving to more complicated Punnett squares like uh, incomplete dominance or sex linked, and then looking at dihybrid ones because they have to work their way up. But if you teach them all the way to dihybrid ones right away, they're going to be lost completely. So I really had to make like, like minimal, minimal changes as I went up with, uh, with each new topic. Okay, so, uh, and uh, and uh, the students, uh, I guess the question is that they need, in your opinion, they need any background, any prerequisite, any anything would help the student maybe succeed in this course that maybe we could review prior to teaching or could be part of the reviewing portion? Not really, all they needed to have was, I'd say at least SEC or SEC 5 English. Um, I had a couple of students who were very, very low in English, SEC like 1, SEC like 2 level, and they had to drop because they didn't understand. There were too many new terms. Um, but even though the, the, the questions weren't necessarily hard, they didn't understand any of the language within it, so they couldn't keep going. Okay. Is it the same for you, Michelle? Yes, so um, most so at my school, um, our um, academic advisor tries to make sure that they are all at least in Sec Five English or finished Sec Five English before she puts them in at this course. And I know there's no actual official prerequisite, but yes, as Tanya said, they do have to be able to understand. And it's not just like reading; it's understanding and inferring and analyzing. Like there's a lot involved. And it is a SEC 5 course, so I, we, we do have to take it to a certain standard. Yes, we, I don't mark grammar and spelling and all that, but, and if, but if they're able to communicate their, um, their ideas enough and I can, I, can, I can see that they understand what they're trying to, I can understand what they're trying to say, that's fine. Um, yes, I did have a, a situation, like even I had, I wouldn't say ESL students, but I had immigrants who did do it as well and they did fine because they had the knowledge enough to understand what they were reading and uh and they were had enough english and did well enough that they could communicate i did have <clears throat> so just case in point like i did have a student who like this was and she ended up having to go to, I think I talked to Michelin, like this is just one of the one, the cases where the student came to us um, from another school and was given sex five English, but came to us. And when I got her in my class, I quickly realized from the way she was answering any of the practice questions in the, in the, the score activities, because that's what I use to kind of like see where they're at, um, that like really she's English speaking, but was not making any sense at all. And, and you can tell, couldn't understand what was going on at all in any of the questions or any of the content, but really, really wanted to get the bio because this was a prerequisite for her program and failed and had to go into distance ed, failed again. So I don't know what the status is, but that's just like, if you are, you know, if you're really struggling to be able to express yourself in words and understand what you're reading, then yes, it would be very hard for you to do bio. I would not suggest it. Yeah. So. Well, I guess like uh, probably maybe Ginen had mentioned before, there's a lot to be done. Hopefully we'll be able to focus more on maybe adaptability and accessibility or maybe things that we could do to help our students. But you're right, it, maybe it would help our students to have a minimum level of, of proficiency of the language, I guess, you know? Yeah, it would. Yeah. And I just like to add that in my biology class, I didn't have, it's not like I had students who were already taking chemistry and physics and very high level students. These are students that took biology instead of taking the SEC for regular science to get mm -hmm. their science credits. Yes. So they were not very strong at all. Um, and they were a bit shocked at the amount of, of content there was. Um, but it is doable if they put the work into it. Yes. Yes, I will second that if you so some of them I did have coming in thinking that they heard in the office, oh, this is the easiest of the sciences. Well, I wouldn't say it's the easiest. It's different, but there's still a lot of content and new terminology. So 
it's not it's not a bird course by any means, which is what some of them thought. So yes, I had a few dropping out because of that. And um, but yes, absolutely, Tanya is totally correct. If you put in the work um, and you have the right attitude, like anything you're learning, like especially like math, you have the right attitude. You put in the work. You try. You definitely can be successful because, like, based on the exams and the pretests that we created, I find myself like I really I don't tell them what to write but I train them really well I sit with them and I don't let them do actually an exam or a pretest or anything until I train them with um, enough and how to answer what I'm looking for and examples of what they should write and like they're trained so well like I, I was able to I have to get better at it, it and I hopefully I'll get better at it but it, it was well enough that I was happy with the results of pretty much like they all met my expectations in terms of where I thought they all were like the 90s students they definitely were 90 students the 70s were like yeah I don't care if I pass I don't care if I just barely pass I just want to be like those were the ones yeah the 70s they that's where they they were and I saw that so anyway which I love. I love what you said. It's what you did is you gave them strategies, you developed their competence. So if they came mm. in weaker in certain things, you develop these strategies as like we, you linked it almost to their English class saying, OK, how do we have to have a question? How we would we answer a question? So these are all strategies that they could actually develop across curricular. So this is this is great. Uh, biology is a good applied English class, if you want, in context, you know, almost mm. when I look at it like that. Um, my question to you now, when we're looking at biology, like any other science class, you have a theory part and you have a practical part. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. So how was uh, your, what's your thought about the laboratory part to answer some of the questions versus the theory? I have like three microscopes that work properly. <clears throat> and then I have a lot of those like viewfinder microscopes where you just kind of have slides that are already prepared with a story about an embryo. And I did that once and it really wasn't that big. Um, we didn't have any actual labs because we can't do karyotypes in the class. So it was a lot of uh, watching videos and looking at diagrams of things and putting together kind of the story of how the embryo was put together um, to get it, but I, there was no laboratory equipment that I used. Um, and some of the students were happy that there were no dissections and some of them were unhappy, but there was nothing like that. So it's, it's a perfect online course that you can do or just with no laboratory equipment whatsoever. Just to add to what Tanya said, this is the research type of labs. There's categories, right? So we have the applied lab where you have the hands-on, like we have what we know in the 63 and the 64, and you have the chemistry magic. In the biology lab, it's more like I give you a situation and you have to do analysis. You have to take on almost like the role of a lab technician. You analyze the data and you start thinking and connect it. So there's this kind of laboratory application. So it's a scenario that you're given and, and you have to bring in like, based on this data, what can you conclude? So there, it's, a, it's a more like an, an analysis, a research yes. type of uh, laboratory. So um, uh, even, yeah. even, like, even if in the requirement, the ministerial requirement, laboratory equipment is not required to do those exams, just to let you know. And, uh, and and Barbara could second it. In the DED, it's very clear. You don't need any laboratory exam uh, tools or instruments to do, none of them is required for these exams. So yeah. to be reassured, there's no, no need for microscope, no need for anything, no dissection, no none of that. Because remember, this is not anatomy, it's genetics again and development, right? The other thing, the other thing is, However, in teaching, some may need it. Like you say, you have videos, you may, some may require it, some may not. So it depends on your students. So uh, Jessica, what did you think about the lab component? Well, I, I don't know if it's too evil to say it. I love creating <laughs> the lab exam. That was so fun. Uh, and for me, I'm, 
I am the type of teacher who will bring up genetic just for the fun of it. All right, and uh, whenever there's a news um, story come on and things like that. So I like to have those type of discussions. And I find that probably will prepare the students for the lab exam well as well, because they need to take positions and justify. And that is a lot like uh, discussion or debate. Yeah, but just to let you know, guys, like my question goes to, to my panels. Uh, do we have exams? Do we have pre-tests? Any teacher would want to know about that. What do you guys answer them now? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, well, I mean, yes, that's our little group came together and we've created, I don't like, have you created two for each lab course, two for each module? Yes. Not, yes. And pre-test as well with, and we've done answer keys and evaluation tools. So there's, there was a lot of work put into it, but we had a grand time. It's so interesting to have bio discussions like, um, so we would meet like once a week and put it together and just, I mean, how did we start? We each took a different unit and we would find questions and then we would pool from our resources and, and like talk about which ones we wanted to put where, change them up, talk about scenarios, try to think about it from the student perspective. How would the student look at this? Would the student be able to interpret this properly? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that was, that was really like I loved, I loved it because I learned, I mean, I, and it's the, it's the best way to get to know the curriculum too, by like just creating the exams. You really have to get to know the content and the curriculum. Like, I mean the content. Yeah. But like, if you haven't done your bio in a long time, which I hadn't um, for years and years, I've been teaching math. Um, now I got to get back into this again. So it was it was great, like really, and and our group melds really well. Like we we really do. We jive really well. That's all I can say. Yeah. But I loved it how um, how everybody brought their expertise to the table, and and there was so much sharing going on. So these exams were really were born out of exchange, teaching, respect. It was with the students at heart. I remember we had initially had done some scenarios. And then somebody brought, but this is not current in their life. When would they ever see that? So we had to go back to the table and restart again, all over again. It was not fun, but we had to do it because it was for the well-being of the students. So we know most of these scenarios were current for the students and would be like, some would recognize themselves in certain scenarios, right? Uh, other, we had to go a bit like a bit, not fixed, like a bit, uh, a bit of fiction, <laughs> but there's certain things that we had to kind of, kind of control some variables to get within a certain area, right, of answers. Also, we don't want you guys, uh, the, the rest of the province to go crazy with, kind, with potential answers also, right? So we had to kind of, but just downside a, a little bit with a bit of, you know, restrictions. But uh, we tried to take in consideration the majority of the students' interests, the, 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 the expertise available. Even we went back and reviewed, we tried to keep the, the scenarios very short because we, we really had our students at heart, especially we're super, super uh, sensitive about like literacy also. So we really tried to use simple, like I don't wanna say simple language because it's still a sec five, but we tried to minimize it to the content versus the context, you know? So um, uh, from a non-biologist, I am so much richer now. So thank you panel for that. <laughs> uh, and um, I would definitely love to recommend this course for all centers, for all students, even though it's a difficult course in terms of literacy, but I think it's a very interesting course. It's a very current course and it will open up, might actually trigger interest in the students, you know, in those fields. So that being said, um, we'll definitely be going for round two. That means version B this year. If anybody would be interested in joining our team, you're more than welcome. The more the merrier, fresher ideas, different minds, you're more than welcome. Please let me know. And the door, my door is open. This is for you, by you. And just to let you know, because I'm very, very proud, we are the first in Quebec who did these exams 
So it was requested by the French side and they've been translated to the French sector. So we're hip hip hooray for us. Thank you guys. So we're first in something. So thanks to, to the English uh, network. Um, and I know now I'll open the floor for any question, any comments, panels, anything you wanna, word of wisdom, what do you recommend for teachers wanting to teach this new course? What would you, uh, the floor is yours. We're gonna work on uh, vocabulary this year. We're gonna find tricks and <laughs> tips and tricks for that. But at least we know this is a, an area of challenge that we will, we will face and we'll, we'll put things together for that for sure. Any word of wisdom, uh, Tanya, Michelle, Guylaine, uh, Jessica, for new teachers wanting to teach this? Um, I think, so one thing I, because I used to teach, um, I te taught grade 12 bio on the Ontario side, and it was a lot of the same content. And I used to, I found that, that was years and years ago, but I found that sometimes telling them, like re- rewording things like a story for them makes it more interesting I don't know um I don't know if I'm saying this right but like you know instead of just memorizing everything like you know eugenesis how to, like all these different terms how the egg forms and everything maybe talk about like a story that's one of the strategies I would give them and also one thing that's another thing that I found helpful is is looking at um the is it etymology you know what words the origin of words so a lot of it comes from like latin or greek sources so that's another thing to, to like the first little suffix or whatever the first little bit is this means this and maybe that's how you can remember it and i don't know those are some of the things i'm just trying to make it interesting for them i guess like taking the stuff from the book like a concept and talking about it in a real life situation, like even in like with their relation to their lives probably, or somebody they know, or I don't know, or somebody in the news. Oh, they love that. Yeah. Somebody in the news, like a, like a movie star or something. Cause you know, like IVF or whatever. I, I was going to say um, even more because I teach the regular science and I've taught advanced science also. So like, and the science option. So I've got a whole range there. And I have, I had a lot more discussions with students in the biology class. They had so many questions that I was a bit surprised they were asking like about menstruation, about uh, sperm meeting egg, about uh, like body parts. They really don't know as much as we think they do. And I think it kept a lot of students that might've been struggling with the actual topic. It kept them interested in the course enough to keep going. And I think that's always um, really helpful because they they often are unmotivated or see this as too much work. But if you if you bring in like if you're open to questions and they, they do ask a lot of questions and you answer them honestly and uh, talk about you know why gene editing can be good but also bad um, like nobody's perfect. So they really like that part and they like to bring it from their own lives too. Um, even this morning, we talked about um, how you could possibly take human um, human uh, chromosomes and mix them with like dog chromosomes to create some sort of human dog hybrid. Would that be a species? And so um, we started talking about literature and the Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells and how that's a book about that and what the ethical implications of that would be. But it was it was really interesting. Um, from students that are not necessarily strong uh, on this matter. Jessica, um, sorry, I would. Sorry, sorry. I just wanted to to add. Like, I think the most ideal way. I mean, I like my the fact that we're individualized here, and I totally agree with it. But if I had the opportunity to teach biology like Tanya with the classroom, there's so much you could do and so much you could mm -hmm. teach. I mean, the only thing I can do is pull my bio people into corner in a corner of the classroom so that we don't disturb the math people, but I've done that. Like being able to talk to them as a group, I found a few times I got to do that was really, really good. Like they, they'd show more. I mean, the one-on-one -on -one is good as well, but I find like, I really get better responses from the little groups. So if you're, if you're able to do it classroom, if you're lucky enough, that's, that's the best way I, I think. 
I would also say for the genetic, uh, but I haven't given the second one, but I guess it would be the same. If you have your student get involved personally first before you jump into talking about the cells and the genes and DNA and stuff like that, they already have concerns about disease in their family. Sometimes their own, sometimes it's their brother, sister, uncle, whatever they heard about it. And, and that, that, that should be Oh, well, that could be a super, super good start. And then they just do research, research on those uh, diseases. And, and, then, and then the learning will be, there's a purpose, right? In learning it and how it works. So it, it creates that base to work on. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that I already have so much because I have built the websites and there are full of real life interview of person affected by a particular disease, new story, etc. So I'm, I'm trying to make it short, but always uh, real. And I was having heard Michelle and Tanya, I already think, oh, oh I can make some Junior Lee or I can make some H5P to turn those exercises that you normally do in class into online for us poor individualized and distant education teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and and maybe a forum that can like can be open to across the school board because for the student to be able to discuss among themselves what they learned or like share personal story to, to make it really more impactful beyond the classrooms. That would be great, Jessica, if you could show me how to do that, because I was thinking about that last year and I just like it's so overwhelming in my brain that I just don't even know where to begin. So, so I'll have to hook up with you about that. So many okay. possibility and uh, oh. yeah, Flipgrid is one. It all depends oh on the, the learning platform that your school uses, because if you use Moodle, they have a built-in forum. Or if we want to take a further and more like a multi-school things, we can talk, we can talk. Okay, yeah, let's talk, let's talk. Okay. But you know, hearing all of you, I see that the, the richness in these conversation, and maybe what we should think about is having a forum for our teachers. I think, I think having these conversation for our teachers, I think would be really, really rich. So who knows, maybe this is something we should all think about, but uh, no, definitely this conversation is not over. It's only beginning. But again, I thank, I sincerely thank the panel, every, all my guests, uh, all the attendees uh, and the support uh, that you uh, that you give to the network and uh, that's how things change without you we wouldn't be able to move forward anyways so um, this is an open invitation for any new members who'd like to join the team to continue on creating version b of the exam uh, the ones uh, returning ones uh, I'll be contacting your center soon, hopefully to restart uh, this. Uh, I gave you September as a break, so we have to start soon, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that being said, thank you so, so much. Every little thing you do, it makes, there's a ripple effect on the other side. So thank you so, so much for all your work and effort and, and your love for what you do. So that's what uh, I'm gonna leave everybody with, unless there's other questions, anything else, if we're good. We're good. Thank you so, so much. Have a very, very good evening. We'll see you soon. <laughs>